as they say in Australia, good day, mate. Welcome to another Biblical Prescriptions for Life. I'm Dr. James Markham here, and I've been asked, how do we find subjects to talk about every week? Well, a lot of what we do is based on your inputs and a lot of prayer. Um, but I think some of the things that we talk about are fairly interesting, um, to at least to me anyway. But anyway, today we're going to talk about diastolic dysfunction. And a lot of people don't even know what that is, but it's a cause of the heart not working well, and it's a cause of heart failure. So let's learn a little bit about that today. I think it's going to be interesting. But as always, let's go to the scriptures. And I got a great text for you today. And I've been studying Hebrews this month, and Hebrews has some great, rich messages from God. But Hebrews 4.11 says this, Let us be diligent to enter that rest, lest anyone fall after the same example of disobedience. So it talks about rest. So actually, when we talk about diastolic dysfunction, that's the time in the cardiac cycle when the heart is resting. Now, many people out there don't really know what a heart looks like, and it doesn't look like the hearts we see at Valentine's. Here is a picture of a human heart. It doesn't look like a Valentine's heart, and it's about the size of a fist. Um, so that's what the heart looks like, and rest is very important for the heart. And what we call it, when it's pumping, it's squeezing blood out to the heart, the whole body. We call that systole. Then the heart fills and rests. We call that diastole. The pressure in that the heart, for instance, you measure your blood pressure like 120 over 70. Well, the 120 is the pressure in the system when the heart's pumping. The 70 is the pressure on the system when the heart is relaxing. So relaxing the heart is very important. Rest is sort of a universal law that God has given us. He talks a lot about rest in the Bible, the physical rest, the rest that comes when we walk with Christ. Um, the brain needs rest. We can't be thinking all the time. We have, need time to process things. Um, our GI system needs rest. We don't wanna be eating all the time. We wanna rest the GI system. Our bones and muscle needs rest, um, but the heart needs rest too. And it needs to rest well, just like we all need to rest well. This is a learned behavior um, for many people, how to rest, especially in this busy world, but the heart needs to know how to rest too. When it doesn't rest well for whatever reason, we call that diastolic dysfunction. It doesn't feel well, it's not resting well. And if you think about the heart, you know, an average heart beats about 80 times a minute. That's about 4,800 times an hour. In 24 hours, it beats about 115,000 times. In a year, a heart beats over 42 million times. And if you live about 72 years, the heart will beat over 3 billion times. And if you eat, live to be 80, it's going to even beat more. So that's a lot of time for the heart to rest in diastole, and it wants to do this well. So um, one of the causes of heart failure that we talked about before when the heart can't meet its needs is the heart not resting well during these three billion plus beats that can occur over the entire life. So what are some of the things that cause a heart not to rest well? Rhythm problems where it goes too um, fast, coronary artery disease, problems with the muscle itself where the muscle is stiff, either it's been thickened, has a genetic condition, or something like iron or protein gets in the heart. Um, there's lots of reasons the heart can't relax. The heart can still be strong, but it doesn't have time to fill and relax. That is what diastolic dysfunction is. Um, a symptom that a person might have that has this is shortness of breath, 
especially when they do things. Um, you might build up fluid in your lungs or in your body. So it's one third of heart failure comes from when a heart doesn't relax well. Um, it might cause you to get fatigued and tired easy because you can't get um, the nutrients and oxygen th spread throughout the entire body. So there's many different things that can cause it. The way we would figure it out if a person had these symptoms is we would do, usually do an echocardiogram. So here is a picture of a heart that's generated from an echocardiogram. Pretty neat, isn't that? Well, this is just a sound wave test, no needles. It generates a picture and we can measure different things in the heart itself. We measure things like E to A ratio and we look at the, the tissue and see how well the heart is resting. Now you can rest your heart a little bit today by just taking a deep breath and relaxing. Doesn't that feel good? Well, that helps your heart rest a little bit better when we just relax. So that's how we assess it. Um, there's many different things that can cause the heart to have diastolic dysfunction, mainly the things we talked about, um, the muscle problems, the, the rhythm problems, the blockage in the artery problems, those are all things that can cause it. But today I just wanted to explain to you diastolic dysfunction, is when the heart doesn't rest well. Next time we're together, I'm gonna to talk about some new treatments that help the heart relax, especially hearts that are thickened from hypertension. And we're gonna talk about some of the causes of what causes a heart not to relax well. And then I'm gonna talk to you about some natural and lifestyle things that we can do in addition to medicines that can help your heart relax and rest better. But the most important rest, I want us to focus back on Hebrews 4, verse 11. Let us therefore be diligent to enter into that rest. God wants us to come to him, to be with him, to accept him as our Lord and Savior, to accept that gift that God has given us so we can commune with him through his son, that we can be forgiven, that we can enter into that hope, that rest that gives us that God gives us through his son. Um, so we want to always be focused in on, on that most important rest too. And that spiritual rest also helps our heart rest as well. So I just wanted to share the meaning of diastolic dysfunction so we can know a little bit more. If you like it, give it the thumbs up, share it with your friends and stay tuned next week because we're gonna talk about some new therapeutic ways that people are treating diastolic dysfunction, helping thick hearts do better, and also talk about some lifestyle changes that can help us treat diastolic dysfunction or a thick heart. So join me next week, and I'm gonna be back very soon with yet another biblical prescription for life.